Are you having hot flashes? Well, today's spot of style is white hot with neon colors. Come put your shades on for this flamboyant trend. I'm about to spotlight some of today's hottest trends in fashion, scrapbooking, crafting, and home decor. Welcome to Spot on Design. I'm Nikki Larson. Today's spot of style is flashing neon. I know, neon is back. Of course, this takes me back to the first time I ever bought my fluorescent yellow sweatshirt and wore it with my parachute pants um, back in sixth grade, but here it is again. Um, neon, in order to make it work, has to be used with some neutral colors. And the reason that is, is because if you use it with a neutral, then your neon doesn't seem quite as flashy or quite as bright or quite as overpowering. Here are some bright spots that can help you work neon into your own home decor or fashion. This first spot that I ran across is this classically modern Thone chair, which is painted in a shocking pink. And I think it would look fabulous in like a white room with some black accents and then this little hot pink chair. So um, you can find this hot pink chair. It's at ABC Carpet and Home. Um, and it is available to buy. The next spot is some neon orange walls. And this is super modern with a little bit of white mixed in. It keeps the neon from being overpowering and kind of makes this modern loft look super swanky. This next spot is a do-it-yourself project that I ran across on a blog called Oh Happy Day. And all she's done is she's taking, she's put together these prints in spots, which of course I love, and she's done it in bright colors and then she's added a couple neons in there. Now she's got a tutorial on there and would you believe she's made it with potatoes. So you can go check that out and see if it's a do-it-yourself project that you wanna make for your own home. This last, I'm gonna call it mini spot, is perfect for that flower trend that everyone seems to still love. Um, and instead of going the roses route, this one's got some flower petals on this necklace and it is gorgeous, I love it. It's got some orange and it's got some yellow, so I think it would look great against a little white t-shirt and maybe some jeans for the summer. This last spot is one that I did in my own home because I thought it would be kind of fun to add to my 4th of July home decor. So I chose a neon red paint and I decided to do another pillow because I love pillows and I think they're fun to add to your decor. So anyway, it's the same process as I've talked about in a previous episode where I've just painted on some fabric. Now this, of course, is a linen and all I've done is I had a king size pillowcase and I just cut off the end. So I, let, I had two pieces to this pillowcase. So I had an 18 by 18 inch square, and then I had this little one. Um, so I thought it would be kind of fun to add some neon brights um, and use it for the holiday. So what I did was I came up with a stencil design and I used my silhouette to cut it out. And I liked this design because it had, it looked like kind of a pearl necklace. Um, and I love pearls, so that's what I cut out. And then I went ahead and bought my fabric paint and I chose, I chose the red to go along with the 4th of July red. Um, and then I mixed my two parts paint to one part fabric medium. And remember the fabric medium is needed so that the paint doesn't go stiff and hard on your fabric. So make sure that you are using the fabric medium when you do a paint on fabric project. So I mixed that up and then my stencil, I just took some um, spray adhesive and sprayed it on the back so it was a little bit tacky and then I placed it on the fabric and then I painted it on. Now of course I used my 
favorite brush, which is these little sponge brushes by Tulip, because they have that um, detailed edge. And because this was such a little pattern, I wanted to make sure that I didn't over get paint over on my fabric anywhere else. So um, I moved it around on my fabric as I was going. So after each, each stencil, I picked it up and moved it um, so I could continue on with the pattern. Then you wanna let that dry for 24 hours before you heat set it. And like I've mentioned before, I like to put an old pillowcase over the top of it before I heat set it um, so that it doesn't get fabric paint or anything on my iron. So you heat set it and then you can go ahead and wash it um, after that. This other couple of things I just wanna point out. Um, if you look at this pot that I've painted, I just barely painted the top knob of the pot. And I think it looks striking against the white of the pot. And that's kind of an easy way to just add a little touch of neon to anything that you're painting. Um, and also on these little glass jars right here, um, I've just added a little um, metal piece that I picked up at Michael's um, in their dollar section again. And I just added a little primer on top of it and painted it with the neon yellow. Um, and those are gonna be used in my daughter's room because of course she is loving neon these days. So she can put her pens or pencils or her makeup brushes, whatever she chooses into those little jars. So for more information and more inspiring ideas and projects, you can follow my board on Pinterest, um, which is Flashing Neon. Um, and I randomly blog at cocodot.blogspot.com. So thanks for joining me in the spotlight today. And are you ready to flash your neon?